So we got a 2015-2018 Z06 in for a straight line drag race street drivable alignment. So we're going to stand up the back wheels to zero camber, a little bit of toe. We'll set up the front probably just to factor specifications. Um, this one is lowered, drove right onto our rack without any scraping or any issues, so that's good. Uh, let me make some more adjustments in the back because it's all over the place. My rear toe is going to be the question of whether or not we can make it adjust to where we want it. We may need to get adjustable tie rod ends for that. And we will not be able to do zero camber in the rear without adjustable tie rod ends. We'll put that on the list. I will give it as little negative camber in the rear as I can. Well, actually, I probably need washers on the tops. I can put washers on the upper control arms to get my camber where it needs to be and keep it in my adjustable range for tow. So that's what I'll have to do. So we're going to get a baseline on this thing to uh, get the camber where I want it to be. I'm going to need to get some upper control arm shims, which I don't have here. I'm a dummy and forgot to grab some of those the last time I was at the store. So I'm going to have to probably run over, pick up some parts, put them on here. Uh, adjustable rear uh, tie rod ends are an essential part of doing alignment on a custom uh, Corvette, either lowered or anything that's been customized on it. The, uh, the adjustment range with factory parts and things is pretty limited, so adjustable rear tie rod ends is basically a must if you do anything to this car. Um, this one's lowered and we're trying to set it up, we're trying to stand the rear tires up for better traction on straight line drag. So we need to shim the upper control arms out to stand those wheels up and then we're also going to need adjustable power ends. So this is what it is, figure out what it needs and put it on there and figure out what else it needs and then align it again. <laughs> so I'm finishing up a preliminary uh, baseline set up um, and I'm actually going to pull it all down and recomp it after I throw some shims in the back to stand up my rear tires. These back tires are a foot plus wide and I want to stand them up to get as much traction as possible on launch. So we're going to take probably a degree out of the back of it and stand those back wheels up. And by shimming the uppers, it should allow me to make the adjustment with the factory arm. Um, but we'll try it and find out. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna set my front toe real quick, just so that I've got everything on a baseline. That way, my initial compensation on the next uh, on the next setup will be more off of a true setup. Um, I've found when the toe's all out of whack on these that my initial compensation, I'll set it up and I'll recomp the car, and it'll re have different readings than what I had just had before I recomped it. So the truer you can have the car set up and then recomp it, I, you know, once I get repeatable results, that's when I stop. So it is what it is. It takes time. Time, time, time. So my initial setup's pretty good. Uh, my camber's within three tenths. My caster's within two tenths. My toe's dead on front and rear. My rear camber's a little more negative camber than I expected to see, but it's uh, it's good enough for now. I'm actually going to stand that up quite a bit. I'm going to pull the rear wheels off, pull up control arm bolts, put in these uh, alignment shims, and a bunch of these little guys. And that's going to stand up my rear camber and when I stand up my rear camber it's actually going to tow out in the back and I'm out of uh, tow in adjustment so by towing it out I should be able to tow it in again sorry by cambering it out I should be able to tow it in again so 
looking pretty good. So upper control arm shim is going to camber up. As it cambers out, it's going to push it in, which is going to allow me to pull the toe out. Is that right? I don't know, something like that. Let me see what it does. Got to try stuff sometimes. So to get a little better camber on the back of this, um, and I'm splitting hairs with this, but uh, I'm going to pull the heads off. And I always, I never set my heads down on the rack. Um, I try to keep my rack clean, but every car that rolls on and off here picks up little stones and little bits from the parking lot and from the road, and they come off on, on the tires onto the rack. So I'm always cautious that I'm. It's pretty hard rubber. I don't think it'll pick up anything, but I always set this back on the alignment machine because I don't want to set this down on the rack, pick up a stone, and then put a mark on the customer's wheels because usually wheels are expensive. Oh, and that's all right. Oh my lord, that's a wide meat. I think those are 15s if I remember right. I'm gonna go ahead and order the arms and the shims. Okay. Um, so we'll see it back whenever the, the arms get in. Whenever the arms get in, he's got. He's got race car things to do between now and then. Yeah, I figured. I'm, I just wanted to try shimming the top out with the shims that I have just because if I can get it better, then it, it's one step closer. And yeah. It's one less thing I have to do the next time it's in. Yeah. But I think it'll... It's funny that he, I think, he's I, been to like six other shops and nobody has mentioned toe arms or shims. They probably haven't talked about caster adjustment in the rear either because we cast these because the lower arms are dual adjustable in the bottom. The earlier ones were only adjustable in the back, and the front one was stationary. Well, if you, if you align these and you move them in different manners, you can actually have a pull under load from a caster issue in the back suspension on these. Hmm. So I have a tool that I put a, a degree finder on, and it tells me the angle of the caster in the back of the Corvette. That would make sense, because you'd almost have like... You're right, like because your upper your ball joint and your lower ball joint, when you, when you move that forward joint, it moves your ball joint in and out. You move the back one, it moves it in and out, but it also moves it forward and back. So it, it throws a weird caster into the car. And I, I, you know, I, I learned about it the hard way. Was guys like, yeah, it pulls when I accelerate, but it doesn't put, it, it's like the back end pulls. And I'm like, well, that's weird. It it's almost research. like it's kicking itself out of, like it's spinning the tire, but it's not actually spinning the tire. Right. And it was, it was like, okay. So then I figured out what the tool was. I bought the GM special <laughs> tool so that I could use it. Well, I ran into that with Carlisle cars because they yeah. didn't have the bosses in it. He's like, man, my my, pull, my car keeps pulling, and I, I think it was one of his because they had the updated knuckles, and they all ended up putting the the, the slots in there for the tool um, on the next production run because they were doing the, the 15 inch rear conversion. Yeah, they were doing the 15 inch wheel uh, conversion, so you could run proper slicks on the back because these these thin tires don't grip. I mean, yeah, even with a drag radio or they just. Yeah, you know, it's still a rubber band. It's yeah, it's just it, there's no give, there's no traction in it. It just breaks loose. Anyway, I've uh, I've got the other side done. I'll put it back together here in a minute. Let's see if we've got some. Well, just, I'm interested to see. Like I had, I mean, I had it at one six on this side, and one eight negative on, and I had no more adjustability to to bring it in. And I'm like, wow, that's that's weird. And What's the factory setting? Uh, I don't know. It's in well, well, I, I never paid attention to the factory settings except when I'm. Like, what I was curious with with the other shops was, were they just dialing it into factory settings and they weren't doing anything? Well, prob special. they're probably just trying to do a factory setting, and that's yeah. fine. That's what these are set up to do. They've right. got factory settings. We're not trying to do a factory setting. We're trying to do. We're trying to make minor improvements, which are noticeable because yeah. clearly the alignments we're doing for people are working. So, but outside of what the factory spec oh it's stuff a, should nothing do. i'm doing in here is factory spec <laughs> so, so it's all right keep working. good old-fashioned alignment shims make it work
lot of this is just taking the time to try stuff and see if it works or not and having customers nice enough to try these ideas on. Not everything I do works, but some of it does. Oh, that didn't work? Okay, we'll change it. Oh, you didn't like your steering wheel position? Okay, bring it back. We'll, we'll fix that too. So these upper arms, I do put shims. There's two trunnions with two bolts on each side of them, so there's four mounting points. So I always shim the upper control arm equally. Um, that way it's everything's symmetric. I don't want to put a weird angle on the trunnions because there's they're a pretty tight bushing. back on we'll be good to go good to go for a recomp and figure out what's next but I think that'll help with our desire to have less camber in the back of this car it's a serious meat So the eighth inch shim on the upper control arm gained me four tenths of a degree on each side. Five ten, probably probably half a degree. Um, so that's good to know. So if I'm shooting for zero in the future, I'll put two eighth inch shims in on all four positions. And it looks like I've got enough toe adjustability now so I can play with my rear camber a little bit better does this have how does this measure caster in the rear or does it require me to just do my angle gauge it probably does that Yeah, I think using the tool is the only way to measure that because there's no way to sweep the rear wheels. They got a mosquito bait, a little prick. Oh, well, my rear cameras are better by a half degree, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to make some more adjustments. We are ordering some other parts, and I will, uh, to allow me my rear toe adjustability to be better. I think I'll be pretty happy with this once I'm done. Caster's within two. Front camera needs a little work. Let's get back to work. Let's talk you more working. Alright. So I'm pretty happy with my adjustments. I'm going to re-sweep caster to verify my caster. I will uh, think that will probably be it. Verify my steering wheel center and then uh, set my toe, lock everything down, and then this thing will be ready to go for now. happy with that. I think that'll do for now. My rear camera is one degree dead even. My toe is pretty much negligible. My front toe is negligible within a tenth, within two tenths. Let him have it, see what he likes. And then when I take another half degree out of the back, it'll that much better. I have torqued my 
lug nuts. Well, that wraps up this initial setup on this Z06. It's a fresh build from Bob's Performance. I believe down near Cincinnati. I forget where it's at. But uh, this was a full engine out, full transmission out uh, rebuild, and now it's ready to go figure out some data and put down some tire to the rubber, some rubber to the pavement, and uh, see what it can do. So, I'm gonna pull this one out, pull it around, move down the line, and then I gotta get back to work on other stuff. Thanks for clicking like, watching, subscribing. We appreciate you guys being there. Uh, it's been a busy year, still got a lot to do, and. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming along for the ride on the bits that we do for YouTube. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day.